Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Bible study. I know, I know, I know I'm a little early. That's all right with you, because <laughs> there's probably nobody on here with me yet. Not as of yet. So I'm ho hoping I'm not having trouble with my my little bitch right here. And I know I got the 1080p going on here. But, um, something about this internet and all this broadcasting and stuff, you know, I always seem to give you a little trouble. But that's okay. We just thank God again for another, another, another day that He has allowed us to live. And I know that some of us may not be feeling well, but just, I, I know, you know, me and I'm always conscious about myself and what I should be doing right. <laughs> and I know uh, I'm not doing it the best that I can, which I should as far as, you know, we all got to try to take care of our health and our mental health, physical health, as well as our spiritual health. We have to create a balance, right? So I have to watch even myself, but even though... I may not be feeling well some days. I still try to find a way and do my best to make sure I give God his recognition and thank him and worship him for just being who he is and allowing um, us to see another day. Um, because I think I've heard uh, some song or even at church when I may be a little bit more younger than I was and I was in service and somebody the first time I heard the phrase if he doesn't do anything else for me he's done enough and that resonated with me and I'm like Lord that is so absolutely right because what you've given me is a wonderful life and I know that I can look forward to to being with you and trying to get and, and being you know, I'm not trying but being in heaven or being wherever you are in your kingdom and so I'm trying my best to do all I can while I'm here and to show some appreciation for this life he's given me right not that I've always been a good boy a good man you know but I've done the best I can for what I have and the information that I had uh, growing up to be a better man. I think you find that in one of my one of my songs I'm singing uh, that I'm releasing. I'm, you know, if y'all run across those songs <laughs> that I'm, it's like my my little hobby, whatever. They're not like full gospel songs. They're they're just private songs, songs that are for inspiration. Okay, uh, I call it the alternative Christian music or the alternative gospel music stuff that you can hear and just be inspired from. So if you see that, uh, you see Marvin Booker uh, with this type song, whatever, which is on Apple Music or on the Spotify, you can purchase that and use and it's normally like 99 cents. So. If you would just support that because any monies that I'm accumulating at this age, I'm trying to build the kingdom of God and helping people, but it takes a little revenue. So this is just an outlet that I can have, which I love music. I love singing to the Lord. I love writing songs and I love studying in the word of God. I love preaching. I love teaching the best way I know how. And I'm always trying to perfect that. But anyway, while I'm here, I'm just trying to give God glory because I love him. Lord, I love you so much because uh, what you did since I was in, I was a teenager, you brought me through and here I am today with, with what I have. So I, I may have some issues, but I'm always depending on you, Lord. I'm depending on you with all of my heart and all my strength because you're all I got. And so... I just have to have the Lord have that 
as I'm getting ready to dive in this Bible study and lesson. Just want to just vent a little bit with you and and before the Lord. Um, <clears throat> we're ending. We're, we like it's 40 chapters in the book of Exodus, and today we're in chapter 38. So we're about to wind it up and get through with this. So I'm hoping that through all these Bible lessons that you're getting some nuggets out of it to kind of understand who our God is, understand Christ, the Holy Spirit, God, our Father, us as much as possible, even on this side, coming from me. And like I say, you have more superior teachers, uh, and they don't even have to be preachers, but you have more superior teachers who teach sound doctrine, but you best be aware, be aware of who they are, <laughs> you know. And I always try to play it safe for the the people that I I shepherd as the under shepherd, as to I don't really um, trust anybody else's teaching but mine to them unless I make recommendations. So a pastor who has a flock, they should be under that pastor, you know, uh, to play it safe to stay away from from minds that waver and that's where Christ come in and says uh, don't follow every wind of doctrine so you have to be careful because it messes with your your vibe your spirit your your, um, your emotions um, mood most time it's your mood that really affects you and and sometimes get to take you adrift because you've learned one thing here but he or she is saying another thing here and you're confused and then you kind of try to challenge your your pastor whatever which should not be done because god allows us to learn at our own pace and whatever he brings to it and it depends on how much you're seeking after God and you're you're really going and diving into his word. So be very careful who you who you're listening to, especially in that in these times uh, like these. I have a few people I love listening to a uh, preacher too. And I've used him for years. Now I probably revealed that at another time, but now is not the time, Booker. So we're going to get rid of it. Go ahead and dive in the lesson. Again, it's a short uh, less than chapter 38 of the book of Exodus. And so I'm keeping my eye on the, the screen here a little bit, trying to see if uh, some people have uh, joined in. So I see none at this time, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on Facebook before I get started so I will know I better cut this thing down okay so I got my chapel okay Shanity Wesley alright <laughs> I'm thinking uh, Lonnie Terry is watching but my screen is not seeing it my screen is not seeing it but uh Seeking, uh, I don't want to get off of Facebook. Let me go back. All right, so I have the White Chapel page. Two people. Two people. Okay. Brenda. I say Brenda. Brenda. I'm on the White Chapel page, everybody. So I know I'm, I'm connected to, I think I may be Johnson Booker. No, no, I'm not on the Johnson Booker page this time. I'm on Dr. Marvin, and I'm also on um, Truvine, Truvine's website, uh, Facebook page. So I got Sister Rainey there, and I don't know why, for the sake of me, this thing is not showing her. But I'm glad you joined in, uh, brother, and I'm glad to have you. I'm trying to listen before I can get ready for <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You know, I don't want to stop you from listening to the church. You should have heard what I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead because this is a short lesson. And uh, the 
way I view things, people are always fascinated. Um, I know preachers, when we get to talking, some of my good preachers, pastors and stuff, I get to talking. And even in Sun School at uh, my home church, I, they'll talk about a certain scripture, right? But the Spirit would have me to look deeper in a way that you never really seen in it before. And I, and I love that, but it still means the same thing that we're discussing. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the book of Exodus. So I'm so glad that somebody can hear my genuine um, uh, uh, lessons that I get from God and that I've been studying. So good God, I don't, man, since my teenagers, teenage years, I'm sorry. Um, But the Lord will help me only say a few things that he wants to be uh, exploited. So I'm just stuck on doing stuff like uh, Genesis and Exodus. So if he allow me to do topical uh, lessons, then we'll get into that marriage and relationship and all of these other things. But what's, what's most important is that everybody get to know the word of God. And, and I'm talking about from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And it's a shame that people are just, I mean, people, I mean, preachers, pastors are, are being uh, placed in churches and they have not even read the entire Bible and I think that's a shame because to a certain degree it's like you're not excited about what God has written through me I mean I want to see I mean I was trying to see everything my page my hand was going through all those pages connecting this and this. just all the way through over and over again have I I've read the Bible into its entirety and I'm still doing that as a practice today and you should too as well so not to uh, prolong it we're here in chapter 38 of the book of Exodus and we're going to get started okay because just observe all that's being read even you know you kind of look at the the, the picture screen which I always, always try to get something vivid okay verse 1 says they built the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood three cubits high it was square five cubits long and five cubits wide just pay attention and they made a horn of each of the four corners so that the horns and the altar were of one piece and they overlaid the altar with bronze they made all of its utensils its pots look at it shovels sprinkling bowls meat forks and fire pans they made a grating for the altar and a bronze network to be under its edge halfway up the altar. Just We're just going to continue to read, but just pay attention to it, okay? They cast bronze rings to hold the poles of for the four corners of the bronze grating. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. They inserted the poles into the rings so that they would be on the sides of the altar for carrying it. They made it hollow out of boards. Now remember what I said. This was being built because this altar that was being made will be portable. It will be easy to break down and carry. Like I say, all the people uh, or tribes were assigned to different parts of that t- this t- tabernacle that was being built. I'm just going to make that point. But look at all the stuff that they made. Now, now they just didn't come up with this stuff. Okay, a lot of these crafts that they had and this this talent that they had accumulated uh, were probably uh, well more than likely was from Egypt learning all that stuff. So now they get a chance to do their thing. And believe me, when God has put his spirit in these people, these people are excited because remember all the people kept bringing the money and all this till they had to, till they had to say stop bringing all this stuff. And so but they were showing some excitement. And uh, to, to, to bring this to God. And that's why I say, hey, uh, and the Bible always teaches us that, he, that that the Lord loves a cheerful giver, okay? He loves to see you want to do for him and to give because it's you and others doing it. You're not doing it just by yourself, okay? It's, and it's not for the preacher. It's, it's not for the deacons. It's for the entire church as a whole to give to God while God continues to give to us. It's a it's a back and forth relationship. It's not even a give and a take. It's a give and a give. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. 
So here we go. And they made the bronze basing and its bronze stands from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance of the temple of the tenth of meeting now i've learned and i've read some literature not too long ago about they will melt the mirrors that they had gotten from egypt just like all the gold that they accumulated all that stuff all that material that they made was from egypt so they would melt that just to make this this uh bronze basin okay next they made the courtyard the south side as a hundred cubits long and had curtains of finely twisted linen. I know that's looking brown, but, but listen to the colors. With 20 posts and 20 bronze bronze basin with silver hooks and bands on the post. Okay, when you read back over this, you'll you you break it down and see that these are, uh this was made to be mobile. Uh, the north side was also a hundred cubits long and had 20 posts in uh, 20 bronze bases with silver hooks and bands on the post. All right. The west was 50 cubits wide and had curtains with 10 posts and 10 bases with silver hooks and bands on the post. The east end toward the sunrise also 50 cubits wide. I, Deacon Cox, I see you. <laughs> Good evening. All right, curtains 15 cubits long were on one side of the entrance and three posts and three bases. And curtains 15 cubits long were on the other side of the entrance of the courtyard with three posts and three bases. For the curtains around the courtyard were of finely twisted linen. The bases for the posts were, were bronze. The hooks and bands of the posts were silver and their tops were overlaid with silver. So all the posts of the courtyard had silver bands. Now everything is starting to look colorful. From the bronze to the gold to the silver. So you see all of that being made, right? And this is for the glory of God. People are active in doing this because this is something that God has requested. When you give to God, he gives back to you. Because we sing the song, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. The more you give to him, he'll give back to you. You just keep giving, giving, giving. It's like a contest. You give God, he's going to give back. He's going to give back some more. You keep doing, I'm going to give you some more. I'm going to give you some more. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. I, and that's why uh, once I've sold in to the tithing and the offering, the giving for for the church community. I mean, I don't talk, I'm talking about I give preacher stuff. I give any, just like Sunday, some man came in, he wanted something i don't care if he they say he came back he came once before he came to other something that, that 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 don't bother me as long as i had it because i was i had extra money i usually don't have extra money because i mess with my plastic card so much he needed some so i gave it to him but i also prayed with him and so i let the others know when you have somebody and you're giving them something if they wanted money whatever it is don't forget to exercise the gift that's in you to pray for them listen to them but the best thing you can do is pray with them okay exercise your gift stop just giving money and letting them go no go ahead and minister to them listen to what they got to say and if God is putting in your heart to share a word with them or share some sympathy with them or say, oh, yeah, I was like this or this happened to me. But God, but God, but God, you can do all of that. But that's why you stay prayed up before you get in the company of others, because you don't know what they need from God. You're going to be the closest thing to God for them. So be there for them. OK, so all of this giving, 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 giving. So you're giving to the Lord as you even minister to people. Did you not know that? Not just in monetary things, but in love and in emotion and holding a hand or shedding a tear with them. But don't forget to recognize God in prayer. And you both are in there. We're two or together. There I'm a two or three rather. There I'm a God in the midst, right? And who and how is he not going to be with you when the Holy Spirit is indwelling in you? He's already there. Okay, it just appeared. Lonnie Terry said, Amen. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Oh, man, y'all make me excited when y'all get on my, my uh, broadcast. The curtains for the entrance of the courtyard were made of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely tw twisted linen. The work of an embroiderer. You keep hearing them saying that. It was 20 cubits long and, like the curtain of the courtyard, five cubits high. With four posts and four bronze bases, their hooks and bands were, were silver and their tops were overlaid with silver. All the, pe all the tent pegs of the temple and of the surrounding courtyard were bronze so you still got all these same colors still uh, appearing whether it's blue purple and scarlet yarn and that finely twisted linen and also with the silver the gold and the bronze and the tent pegs and everything i mean they're just hooking it up i mean you, you know when you learn a craft you you can perfect the craft and never never get never uh smother the gifts that you get never smother your hobbies you have to do something you just don't want to call it a retirement time lay around watch tv flip the screen do nothing but eat potato chips and all this stuff and looking at tv no you don't want to do that you want to do something that you really enjoy and tv is not that and it's not that enjoyable after a while especially today's time you see what all the stuff that they're putting on there and a lot of things has to do with either sex or murder, bad news, bringing separation, talking about a Democratic, a liberal, a Republican, just trying to divide that mind. And where, where there's division, there's evil. Where there's division, there's the devil. Because God is never about separation. He's never about confusion. Okay? Even in the Bible when it's being taught, it should never go over your head. It should be explained where all can learn just as if everybody is a child, which is truth. Everybody should be considered a child of God who has given their life over to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. These are the amounts of the material of the okay, we're we're coming to an end. These are the amount of the material to use for the tabernacle, the tabernacle of the covenant of law, which were recorded at Moses' command by the Levites under the directions of Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest, Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made everything the Lord had commanded. That's faith, that's doing, that's love, it's an action. And you get blessed for that. Just like you're watching this broadcast of me doing this tonight, you're going to be blessed. I'll make sure I mention Lonnie Terry and I mention Sister Annie uh, chimed in and anybody else that the Lord allows to hear me teach tonight. Okay, with, with, with him was Aholiab, son of Isamech of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer and an embroiderer in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen. Lord, just don't get in it about it. He's going to get skilled people who know what they're doing. He's not even showing favoritism. We just don't supposed to be pro-black. We're supposed to do, be pro-doing what's right and getting it done the right way. Okay? The total amount of the gold from the, from the wave offering used for all the, for all the work on the sanctuary was 29 talents and, se and 730 shekels according to the sanctuary shekel. So when we're talking about that gold that the people kept bringing and they kept bringing, kept bringing, uh, some of the scholars, which I just not too long read, said that was probably a ton of gold being used to build this temple a ton so it's expensive this was an expensive sanctuary this was you you didn't build the lord no shack okay you didn't build lord less than if it's if the building that we build for the lord is cheap you want a cheap price but you do not want cheap material what you giving the Lord? Would you give yourself that? Well, I don't need all that. Exactly. You don't need all that. But guess who do needs all that? The Lord needs all that. Okay? But the Lord is setting the example for his children. You don't sell what's less. You sell what's the best. 
because what's best lasts longer. If you keep buying cheap clothes, okay, you you end up what you paid for. Because, because you're just going to keep buying it over and over because the material that is made out. But if you buy quality, okay, that lasts longer, the less you are to spend money on. If you buy a cheap car, if you buy a used car that doesn't really uh, uh, last long, you, you you pay for what you what you bought. Okay, but if you get something that's good, reputable, whatever, hey, <laughs> may last you 20, 30 years. And that's what you are because you don't need to be caught up on things when you can be doing something that matters with your money. Transportation, clothing, shelter, and food should be the last thing you think about. But when you do buy those things, they should be the best. I'm thinking, I'm not, I mean, I'm even talking to me. Even when we're talking about food, okay, we're only really supposed to put in our body the best stuff. Not just junk. <laughs> I know we all get I got I gotta say it because this is what God tells. Me. It has to convict me. Whether it's potato chips, whether it's hamburger, whether it's hot dogs, whether it's pizza. We don't think about the salad. We don't think about the fruit and the vegetables as often as we should. Now when I first started teaching, just like at St. Paul and some of the in uh, Mount Vernon, I was just telling them that the Spirit told me to tell you that when we look at Levitical, Leviticus or Deuteronomy, it talks about the food that God considers clean and unclean. Is that what that basically is for? Is that these food are healthy for your body and they're easy to digest. So the easy, the easy digestible things are more healthy for your body in most cases because it should never be hung up in your body and taking all this time. To deteriorate to excrete from your body God didn't build the system of your body to um, function that way is that right yeah so again as we look at this segment of the, of the scripture then God uh, wanted the best so we should always think about giving God the best because he does he has and he still is giving us his best the silver obtained from those of the community who were counted in the census were, there we go, 100 ta talents and 1,775 shackles according to the sanctuary shackle. One becca per person, that is half a shackle according to the sanctuary shackle. From everyone who crossed over to those counted 20 years old or more, a total of 603,550 men. You see that? All right. Okay. We you know we we're just talking about the men. Okay. Remember that we we say you know if we count more, we're well over a million, close to maybe two or three million folks that came out of Egypt. The hundred talents of silver were used to cast the bases for the sanctuary and the curtain for the curtain. Hundred bases for from the uh, hundred talents, one talent for each base. They used the 1775 shackles to make the hooks for the post to overlay the tops of the post and to make their brands. All of that gold. Like I say, it, it probably told out to be over um, uh, a ton, a ton of gold. Okay. All right. Here we go. The bronze from the wave offering was 70 talents in 2400 talents uh, shekels they use it to make the basis for the entrance to the tenth of meeting the bronze altar and its bronze grating and all of its utensils the basis for the surrounding courtyard for those for its entrance and all the pegs for the tabernacle and those for the surrounding courtyard so it's even tallying up all that was made to make this great and beautiful temple of God. And my brothers and sisters, this is it for uh, chapter 38. We have two more chapters to go. 
and if it's the lowest wheel, I'll be so happy and ready to see what's next and what's the next step in line. I'm glad you was able to join in. Brother Cox, Sister Rainy, who probably is gone. <laughs> I thank God somebody else jumped in because I see five viewing right now. So I, I just thank God for you all. So dear Father in heaven, I thank you for all of these that have joined in online, Lord. I pray that you continue to bless their lives. I know many issues, Father, is going on in our lives. So I pray that you will meet Brother Cox and his family. Bless him in a mighty way. I pray that you touch Sister Raining and whoever the, the others are listening right now that's on this broadcast. Bless their health. Bless their strength. Bless their, their mental and spiritual state. I pray, dear Father, that you continue to give them the power to be able to excel in you. Comfort and keep them, Father, for all the discouragements that we have all the sickness that we have and all of the lonely times that we have. I know that you're able and I know that you can to help me and them to be rich in you. So let your Holy Spirit come into their home and their lives right now. And whatever they're asking in prayer, whatever their request is before you, that has been and that is for right now and even later on, I pray that you will grant it and it all be in your will that you may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I feel like praying tonight. And just because you all have really blessed me. And I thank you for, for doing it. <laughs> all right now, Lonnie. <laughs> Lonnie, Lonnie, Lonnie is on the line. That's him. Yeah, Lonnie is on the line. And I thank God. Yeah, I, I did acknowledge that. That Brother Terry is here. I love Brother Terry. I love Brother Terry and his wife, Sister Terry. Tell Sister Terry I said, hey, okay. All right. Tell tell a Dr. Marvin. Say smooches. <laughs> Say where he get that Dr. Marvin from? Man, I got four degrees. And I I got I got proof. I got what what they say? What they say? They ain't got they ain't got paper. I got receipts. <laughs> That's the new language today. I got bruh. I got receipts, honey. Yeah. But I just just like to have fun with it. I like to say that Dr. Marvin thing just to have fun, but it is true that I do have that degree but I just thank God for all of those that love God y'all know if you know me you know I'm always excited to be around God's people that's that's just that's just my environment that new life never has changed for me since the day the Lord changed my life and it's funny coming up on um, this Sunday I believe this yeah this this Sunday coming up will be my 20 years as a minister or a preacher uh, for the Lord. 20 years, March the 24th. That started in 2002. So here I will will be there. No, 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 2002, been gone. So 20, that's 24 years, 24 years. Yeah, oh, man, I'm, I'm rolling. But no, I think it's 20 years, isn't it? Isn't that 20 years? Well, I know that when I went to my job, my job and being called to preach, same time, <laughs> same years, you know, uh, that the Lord called me. Yeah, no, no, no. I got a little bit on that job, so yeah, I'm, I'm more uh, years than my job. My job is 20 years, so yeah, I'm, I think I'm two years ahead, 20, 24 years. My goodness, but I just thank God so much for for all that He's done. Thank God for you. Glad you could join me tonight this evening or whenever you watch this this broadcast on Exodus chapter 23 just thank God for you and all that God is doing for you and remember you got somebody that comes into your life don't forget to use your gift and pray with them pray for them and praying that the Lord will have you to be a provider for whomever whether it's a stranger or whether it's people that you know even your home family whatever because you're going to be the next person that's going to be jesus christ to them okay because you got the spirit of god indwelling in you to represent him as an ambassador do all you can do it when you can and and do it be true if 
if when it, and be true to God. You know, I always practice when I was a young man. If I come to church and I'm not filling up the speed to where I can say, Amen, I want to praise the Lord. If I'm doing that, I'm not going to do anything because I'm not going to give God anything. But when he when I want when I feel I want to praise him and thank him, hey, I give him all. I give him all. Y'all know me. I'm from the loud crowd. <laughs> and yet I know God is professional, he has standards, and he has structure. And I love that about our Lord. He's our Father. Call him Father as much as possible because you are the child of God. Hallelujah, somebody. And until next time, man does not live by bread alone, but he lives what? By every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I'm Dr. Marvin Booker, and we'll see you next time.